Welcome Algebra 2. This is section 2.6, Families of Functions. The essential question is, what are families of functions and what is the parent function? Let's begin. I think this whole unit is pretty heavy and, and there's a lot into this and this isn't a one day thing. We'll re reference a lot of the stuff this unit for most of the rest of the year. So don't be scared if you don't understand everything right away. So when we talk about different families of functions, there's a bunch of different ones. There, and they're all, a lot of them are listed right here. There's more, but these are the I think the ones that we're going to really focus on for most of the year. So you've seen linear functions before. That's just graphing a line and quadratic functions. These other ones I wouldn't even bother writing these down for now. We're, you can if you want, but we'll come back to those later on. I think the focus today is going to be on linear and quadratic functions. Quadratic functions are the ones with this parabola shape right here. And linear functions are the ones with the lines. You should have seen both those in algebra two or algebra one. So these are the different families of functions. What is a family of functions? It's a set of functions where each is a transformation of the parent. So it, basically they all kind of look the same, but they're sometimes they're bigger or smaller or they're rotated. I, but the, the, the main idea is that they, they all come from some kind of parent. So like if we go back to this last example here, linear functions, their parent function is y equals x. That's like the easiest, simplest form of an equation of a line, y equals x. The quadratic function, the simplest form, is y equals x squared. That's the simplest quadratic function you can create, and that's the parent. So the simplest form of the set of functions. So here in this example, I said f of x equals x. That's the same thing as saying like y equals x. So this is just a line just like that. Uh, another, a transformation of that parent, and this is what we're talking about, is this function g of x equals x plus 6. That's like saying y equals x plus 6. So basically what happened with this line is it moved up a little bit and you see this y-intercept here is at 6. So there's still it's still a line, just like the parent function, but it's been transformed a little bit. It's not it's been moved around. So that they're still part of the same family of functions, but they're different functions. Alright? Um what else can we do with a translation? So a translation of functions is how we get different members of the family. It's a shift in the graph. It does not change the shape. So basically, you're shifting it left and right, so the horizontal transitions or the vertical transitions up and down. So the way to make a horizontal transition, horizontal, is is this. It says f f of x plus or minus h. Okay, write these down. And the vertical translations f of x equals plus or f of x plus or minus k. Well, write those down for now. What does that mean? The horizontal translation that x that h when you add it to x, it's going to move it left and right. So if the number gets higher, like you do a plus h, it actually shifts the graph to the left. So plus h shifts to the left. And then you do a minus h, it actually shifts it to the right. Now, the, this plus or minus k outside here. So we're going to, I'm going to write that down over here. So I'm going to say plus h equals to the left. And then write minus h equals to the right. I'd write that down. That's a nice note. For the vertical shifts, the plus or minus k, well, if you do a plus k, it's going to shift it up. And if you do a minus k, it's going to shift it down. So it just shifts the whole graph up or down on the axis. So I'm going to write down a plus k. I'm going to say that equals going up. And then a minus k is going down. So that's the vertical shifts. So let's, let's look a little bit more. We've got another thing, another way to transform is reflections. So it's flipping the graph across a line, such as usually the x or the y-axis. So you might say like this is the original equation f of x right here, or this, this, this shape. You can reflect it over the x-axis, and it just kind of mirrors it like when you're looking into like a pool of water, and you see a mirror of yourself. So it's reflecting right here in this blue. You can also reflect on the y-axis. It kind of looks like it's, it's, just, it's just flipped around. The, the, this side on the right is now on the left. This shape, the slope right here, is now on the right side, so the left. So the way you do these reflections, if you want to reflect off of the y-axis, you do f of negative x. What does that mean? You make the next, you're going to make the x negative. Make the x negative, and we'll practice that later. What if you flip on the y x-axis? You're going to make the y negative. So write down make the Oops, the y negative. All right, moving on. So another way you can 
you can change a function is vertical stretch and vertical compression. So vertical stretch stretches the y values so, and it makes the graph taller. So it stretches, it makes them bigger. See, so stretches bigger. And it makes the graph taller. So this is going to happen. And, and, and the way you do this function is, is you have the equation a times the function. So a times f of x. So when a is bigger than 1, it actually is going to stretch it and make the graph taller. So if I were to actually graph that, I'm going to do this on this line. This this graph right here in blue, blue that blue graph is going to be y equals x squared. So in red, I'm going to actually do the vertical stretch, making it taller, skinnier. It would actually, that's not a good line. It would actually look like this. So this a is greater than 1 is going to be that green part, the red part right here. So that's making it skinnier, usually and it looks a little taller. Vertical compression, it reduces the y values and makes the graph shorter. So if, and this happens when your value for a is between 0 and 1. So what that's going to look like, and I'll do that in purple, it's going to kind of look like this, where it, it, it gets wider. So it's, it's a wider graph, it's a shorter graph, but it's still the same parent function, y equals x squared. It's just been transformed a little bit. All right, next part. Here's the summary of the transformations, and I don't expect you to have this memorized right now. It'd be good to look this over and write it down. We'll be referencing a lot of this throughout the year, and I think as we do this more, you'll understand it better. Um, vertical translations, that's the translating up and down. So you draw little up and down arrows. So you go up k units. If you do the plus k, this is where you go up, and you do the minus k, you go down. Horizontal translations where if you do a minus h, so you subtract from the x value, you're going to go to the right. So it'll move the graph to the right, and if you add to the to the h value, you're going to go to the left. And it's kind of opposite of what you think, because usually when we add to the number line, we move it to the right, and when we subtract, we move it to the left. But when you're doing horizontal translations, it's the opposite of what you think. Vertical stretches and compressions, you're changing that coefficient to the function, that a. So if you make that coefficient real, that a really big, it's going to stretch it so it's really skinny, really tall. If you make that a uh, something between zero and one, it's going to flatten it out. So I'm going to say tall. I'm going to say short. Reflections. This is this is where you're just kind of doing mirrors across the x or y axis. So if you're doing it across the x axis, uh, you're going to make the y negative. And if you're doing it across the y axis, you make the x negative. It's like the opposite. So x axis, make the y negative. Y axis, make the x negative. All right, so write those down right now and let's try these examples. Pause the video. All right, let's answer this. How are the functions related? How are their graphs related? So y equals x and y equals x minus 2. Well, these are related because they're, how are they related? They're both linear. So they're both linear. And then the second one here is just, so I'm going to call this a second, is 2 less. So it's just, you're subtracting 2. So that's how they're related. They're both linear functions, except we have 2 less right here. It's x minus 2 instead of x. So how are their graphs related? Well, if you actually graph these things, let's make an xy chart. Let's, let's actually graph this. Let's see what's going on. So we got, I want to make my table, plug in values for x and y. So for the first one right here, and I'll make another table. I'll do, well, this will be my first table. If you plug in any value for x, 1, it's going to be the same value for y. 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1. So this first equation here, I'll do this in green. This is actually going to go, if we did 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So I'm kind of sketching this out. If you plotted points, it'd form a nice little line like this. Now, if you do the minus 2, this is, this is actually going to change a little bit. So I'm going to do another x, y table. I'll do this one in red. So if I, let's say, I start with 0 for x. If you plug in 0 for x, you'll have negative 2 for y. If you plug in 1 for x, you'll have negative 1. And if you plug in 2 for x, you'll have 0. So the graph of that is going to be 0, negative 2, which will be down here, negative 2. Then 1, negative 1, so up here. And then 2, 1. So it looks like I have a line down here in parallel. So how are the graphs related? Well, the second one is down 2. So this red one, this is going to be down 2. 
So they're both linear, but I move that, that red one is shifting down two units. All right, pause the video. What is the graph of y equals x squared minus 1 translated up five units? So let's graph y equals x squared minus 1. Well, actually, that's not. Well, if we translate it up five units, if we're going up five units, instead of that being that minus 1, I'm going to take this, this equation here, and I'm going to go up five units. I'm going to go plus 5. So what happens when you go plus 5? You're going to get an equation, y equals x squared negative 1 plus 5 is going to be plus 4. So let's graph that. x, y chart. So that x, if I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get 4 for y. Plug in 1 for x, you get 1 squared plus 4 is 5. If you plug in 2 for x, you're going to get 2 squared. It's going to be 4 plus 4 is 8. Let's try different numbers. Negative 1, negative 1 squared plus 4 is 5, and negative 2 will also be 8. So if we're plotting those points, 0, 4 is going to be here, 2, 8. It's going to be right here. Uh, oh wait, and 1, 5 is going to be right here. Negative 1, 5 is here, and negative 2, 8 is right here. So those are my points. I'm going to graph a parabola, looks something like that. So this is what that graph looks like translated up five units. Okay, try the next one. Pause the video. Okay. Let g of x be the reflection of f of x equals 3x plus c in the y-axis. What is the function rule for g of x? So if we're reflecting on the y-axis, what's the rule for that? I'm going to go back two slides and look at that. So if you reflect on the y-axis, you make the x negative. So I'm going to take that function, f of x equals 3x minus 3. And I know g of x is going to be making the f negative, so f of negative x. So if I make this f of negative x and I substitute negative x in for x, I get 3 times, oops, try that again, 3 times negative x minus 3. And I can just put that negative on the outside, so it's negative 3x minus 3. So the function g of x equals negative 3x minus 3. So that, what is the function rule for g of f of x? g of x? That's it. I'm just plugging in a negative for that x. All right, that's it.